Hello everyone, Dan 14th Prime here. The Transformers Bumblebee movie 30 DLX collectible Soundwave in Ravage action figures has arrived into the Prime Pyre. Let's check these things out. Here we have the front of the box for Soundwave in Ravage. Again, DLX. This is 30's call it 12 inch ish action figure line. Decent sized box, got a big Decepticon logo there on the back. And back on the front, you'd actually get a flap and window effect. I have everything out of the box here, but cool picture of the product there on the left inside flap. Now here we have Soundwave and basically everything that's out of the box, excluding the stand, which is too large to get up there. I'll show you that separately. But of course we have Soundwave and Ravage. Soundwave has his blaster gun and four sets of hands. So eight hands there and the one unique left point gesturing hand for nine total hands as well LED light up eyes which are on at the moment and we'll take a closer look with some dimmer lighting. All in all it's a pretty nice pack out. Prices for this guy will vary but you can expect to pay about $200 which I think is a pretty good value for what you have in front of you. Now I pre-ordered mine a long time ago directly from 3.0. You can find yours at places like Sideshow. I'd even check Amazon probably or eBay of course and there's links for all those down in the description below. As always any shopping you do those links supports the channel at no cost to you, so thank you very much for that. And before we jump in and take a closer look at this guy, if you're not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. And any like or comment you can leave on the video helps the video and channel out very much, so thank you for that. Okay, let's get into the review. All right, let's start off with Ravage. This little guy looks super cool. Amazing sculpted details, fantastic paint detailing as always with 3.0 or its predecessor 3A, and very good articulation on this cat as well. I'll just pick him up and show you these awesome details. Decepticon logo there, just great weathering all through the legs. Silver paws. He's got his rockets or guns here. These just peg in out of the box, little accessories that come on and off. He does transform into his sort of cassette mode, um, so you need to take those off when you do that. Check out the top of this. Just looks so cool. This here as well, this top looking thing. Accessory as well that comes off, just pegs in there. All this articulation you can see obviously through the shoulders, the legs here, bend forward like that. You get that there at the, the ankle if you will, the mouth. Mine's tight but opens and closes, the head does that as well. The head doesn't twist or anything. The leg here as well, kind of get the hip, get the knee, and even get this high ankle I guess right there. As well as down here at the foot and you can sort of do a little something with the tail as well. So I think very, very poseable, you know, the hips sort of rock as well. You don't get any like twist through the torso or head or anything like that, as I said though. But as I've been showing you that, hopefully you've just been taking in this uh, amazing details. Check out all that out through the torso there, just like his mechanical ribs and everything and his chest looks so cool underneath there. You know, they didn't skimp there, even under the head, even under the paws. So great job as always by 3-0. I've went ahead and grabbed Soundwave here. Of course you can open his chest. There's a couple just pegs up top, but you just pull down. Some detail in there, it's really dark though. But you can sort of see just some colors and electrical sort of looking screens and things like that in there. But we're here to check out our boy Ravage. Now I've sort of folded him back up. He'll come like this out of the box. I'll show you how to unfold him. Pretty straightforward in terms of Ravage transformation stuff, but you can see he's kind of this chunky block, let's say. Not quite a cassette tape, but hey, it's Cybertron. And you can see he just will sit in there like that. So that's pretty cool. They brought the gimmick back, it works. Doesn't exactly eject out of there easily, but there he'll kind of fall out. And then back with Ravage here, I mentioned he, he comes like this out of the box. Pretty simple, a couple, a couple pegs. Um, you can just sort of pull these out a bit. There's a little peg right there on each side that kind of goes in that little hole. So you can pull those out, get his legs out, and same thing down here. You can pull these legs down. They have pegs here on the top that peg there on the shin. So that's really all the pegs you get just to sort of keep him secure. Um, here's his tail, just sort of flip that down and his whole butt piece swings up. And then this piece here will be his chest. So swing his head up and bring this off his butt up into his chest. 
and um, his whole hips here actually rock back and fill this white piece. Click in there and then just bring the legs down, legs down and you know get them in looking like a cat sort of pose. Again, he's sort of been like that, like that, etc. And then I mentioned the accessories, you know, the, the guns here, just pegging the side, little guy up top, big guy on bottom. Just like that. And then on the back here as well, again, this little, I don't know, missile array assembly. Two little pegs right there on his, uh, on his back. So that's Ravage. Very cool, very cool little guy. Now here we have Soundwave. I've put him next to the DLX Optimus Prime as well. I don't know the scale they were going for in the movie, and I don't know that we even saw Optimus and Soundwave side by side necessarily. But what struck me about Soundwave here is he is awfully big. He's much bulkier than Optimus. He's even taller. And just look at the size of their heads. Look at the differences there. I mean, Optimus is looking beetlejuice I never really noticed or thought about that on the Optimus figure standalone, but now that I bring Soundwave in, I just feel like they could fit a little bit better in scale together. And here, just for a helpful reference point, that's Soundwave, this DLX line next to an MP44 scaled Masterpiece Transformer. Now, standalone here, I really love this Soundwave. I gotta say, with uh, 3.0 finally giving us the premium scale Optimus Prime, I wasn't too sure I was gonna stay in the game on DLX. Um, but then the sound wave showed up and it has me uh, still thinking about staying in the game and see what else they give us. I think this figure is, is amazing. I think it's better than the Optimus, uh, particularly when you put them side by side. A lot of great detail in here. Of course, you have the core blue, just great design. They finally gave us in that movie all of these kind of gunmetal sort of paint accents. 3-0, and again, their predecessor 3A, just when it comes to paint apps, I mean, just right up there with the best in the business, Hot Toys, whoever. And I always feel like they give it to us at a, a much better price, quite frankly, a much better value. Very classic um, design on this guy, Decepticon logo up there. The head looks so cool. Check out the side there. It's a great interpretation of Soundwave. I think it looks great. I've got the batteries in it, uh, two LR44s. Uh, they're not included, but just pop off the head, put them in, not difficult. Push the front of the skull there, and that's the button. I dig that too. They're always good with integrated hidden buttons. I've said it time and time again. They continue that trend. And the eyes light up pretty well, I think. Yeah, you're seeing it pretty well right here. Got a good amount of light on them, and still, bam, you definitely see that. So I like having his eyes on from a gimmick. Usually you don't care, but it makes him look way cooler. Let's jump down to the midsection here. Maybe we'll just take this guy in thirds. Um, again, you can take in all the awesome paint detailing, all the amazing sculpt, all these little throwbacks, you know, to the tape recording type buttons that they put on there. Never even noticed that until I had this thing in my hand. So cool. Look at these big chunky arms. Get that up out of the way. You can see how that comes around in these kind of white panels that are over the top of this sort of gunmetal underneath thigh. There while I'm back here. Again, the stand. I haven't showed you the stand yet. We'll get to that. We'll just plug in right back there. And just looks fantastic. What can I say? Really impressed with what they can pack into the scale and size of an action figure. And then finally here, the very bottom. Big chunky feet. Good balance. This dude is, is hefty too. Um, nice yellow accents there. The legs and everything. Again, it's just so massive compared to... Uh, to Optimus. This big, huge calf thing sticking out. Got all these moving things here, these little bracket looking things on the back of his ankle. So, yeah. Very, very great sculpt work, paint work, everything you expect from 3 0 slash 3A, if I can keep giving them some credit for uh, their predecessor. It's just really great work, especially for the money. So let me just show you the articulation while we're here. Uh, two pounds, three ounces, this guy, by the way. So very hefty, as I said, for a 12-inch-ish action figure. Looks down like that. Looks up like that. It's sort of like a, just a ball peg here up high, but then he's got a neck joint as well on this big, chunky metal neck piece below. So 
pretty good articulation there. It does have a crunch, just as Optimus did, where you get the spine effect to come through. So they kind of kept all those basic features. And your articulation overall is very good. Um, you can raise the arms up there. You can see how those kind of come out of the shoulders. These panels accommodate and move. And here, that also butterflies out. And again, you can see they bring out an extra plastic piece there to kind of cover and fill. So doing a great job. Uh, bicep swivel, right, up there. There's nothing um, at the form, no rotation there, though. And you get a double-jointed elbow that gets you very nicely up. The hands just go on on a peg ball joint, sort of like a you know hot toy sort of thing, I guess. Forgot about uh, twist here. A little more limited. All this stuff is kind of getting in the way of his... So these things that were getting in the way, you can just raise these up and get your waist twist right there. I'd say 45 degrees each way. And then you just sort of position them back as best as you can get them to sort of look because a lot of these things will move. So that's how you get more waist. And don't let me forget here as well, you get sort of a side rock. Down towards his legs, because they're so big, they just say to kind of watch out with some of the... Uh, the rubbing that could occur, you know, sort of turn them out before you start to raise them, for example. There goes that. Well, that was a different piece that popped off this time. Which piece was that? Butt panel. Okay, we got the butt panel back on. Again, it just rotates. Some of these things, you know, they'll rotate to accommodate the articulation, but you just need to look at everything. Watch where your contact points are. I'm trying to see if I can clear it. I think I'll clear the butt panel, and I'm not clearing much up front, though. 3A, but you can slide down the whole thigh thing. There it goes. Sort of just comes down. There's a lever inside, so you can drop it down a bit. So you can see how those are a little unbalanced now. This is lower. That's going to give you a little bit more clearance again with, with this to then get the leg up like that. The knee is very good check that out you see how that shifted here and gave you some extra see how this thigh piece kind of slides on something that's cool you've got again just a big ball joint type thing up there at the hip very heavy a lot of tension in there down here at the foot this is like super tight rocks to the side i'm going to point like that point a little bit that way as well so he also has here a pointing toe piece on the foot. Uh, I didn't show you the outward thigh movement here, so this is kind of cool when you go out. You see this panel to start to raise off and accommodate here, and you can actually pretty go pretty high there. It's really kind of pushing into that, so I don't love it. But if you had to have some kind of pose there, you could do it. Just be careful, because there's a lot of contact there on this side. But check that out. That's pretty cool. So here we have all nine hands, the four sets in the, the one gesture hand. Again, you've got a set of these, kind of Spider-Man wall crawling, force push looking thing. You get a set of left and right for the gun, trigger finger. Set of closed fist, and a set of these, which is more like just open, relax sort of hand. And again, the one left hand gesturing point or smell my finger hand. And then here we have the big dog, big blaster gun, looks good. Gun metal, sort of worn. Lots of good detail through there. Doesn't, uh, not seeing anything move or articulate on it. No LED or anything like that. Oh, here we have one little piece moving. This thing in the back. Fantastic. <laughs> but looks very, very cool. And there you have the blaster in the trigger figure hand. Just put it with Soundwave so you can see how big his gun is. But if you put him next to Optimus, clearly Soundwave has some blaster envy. And the real question when you get these guys on display is who's going to get to do the point? I already had Optimus in a pointing pose. Now I feel I need Soundwave in it to direct Ravage. The first world problems continue. And then finally here we have the stand. Uh, looks familiar to Optimus. You get this big base here and this big chunky guy here. Does all this cool stuff. And um, it's just going to peg in there. I won't really use this on display, but it's cool though. It has an articulation point here. You can sort of just do that and flip that up to lock it. Flip it down to lock it, excuse me. 
And this piece, which you saw extending here, has a little lever there. You can push back to unlock that. You can manage the height. And of course, this is the piece that's gonna go um, into the butt. And I believe it just, there went, yep. It just pulls out and you just move it. So we'll put that like that. Then again, if we grab sound wave here, I think I've mentioned it a couple times already, the peg is there for the stand. It's just gonna go right in there. Solid, sturdy. So, yeah, like I said, I won't use the stand, but it holds him. He's two pounds, three ounces, like I said. He's up there super steady. One last accessory thing with Soundwave here, since it comes out of the box um, separated, I guess I'll show you, but this piece can come off. Not much to it really, doesn't do anything otherwise. And this piece here can come off as well. And this has got a little articulation. This is like a hefty metal thing too. It was super tight, but it can bend. You can see how it'd be like that. And then you can bend it like this. So you get it upright. It just pegs in and hole there, pegs in there. So there you have it guys, 3.0 DLX Soundwave. It's good, it's really good, it's better than the Optimus, which annoys me a little bit, not gonna lie. And this figure is every bit worth those 200 or so dollars. Again, links down in the description below, Sideshow, Amazon, eBay, any shop, any of those links, supports the channel at no cost to you, so thank you very much for that. It's always been my experience with 3.0 3A. They do a fantastic job on Sculpt, phenomenal paint applications, great articulation, Simple but impactful and practical to use electronics like the eyes. I feel they do all that stuff as well or better than even the best in the business, like the Hot Toys, etc. of the world, and they just do it for a, a much better value. So can't recommend this guy enough if you're a Transformers fan. It leaves me with the big, big dilemma of who gets to use the point pose out on display, Optimus or Soundwave. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, any like or comment you leave supports the video and channel out very much, so thanks for that. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do so, because collectibles like Soundwave here and a whole lot more are what you'll see on Dan the 14th Prime. And if you want to see Soundwave in my new Magic Case display, be sure to check me out on Instagram as well. Same handle, Dan14Prime. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video. I'll see you next time.